Well, good evening all, and how are you? It's been about a month now, and uh, I'm glad to be back. And it's nice to see you all here. Let's have a quick look through the chat here. Good evening, Wayne. Good evening, Roy. Dave Oti, Colin Izzard, Roy Waterfall. Kevin, hello Kevin Newman, Joseph, my old mate, how are you? And Richard Bearden, Brian of Hartwood. Engine Monkey, good evening. Richard Bearden, hello. Mike Yu, how are you, sir? Alan Russell. Tom from Canada, hello. Douglas Mungum, good evening to you, Douglas. Gina Adam, good evening. And welcome, of course. Hello, Shay, BB Turning. Good evening and welcome to you, sir. Lawrence, good evening to you. And Barry, Wood Dude, how are you? Lionel, good evening. Leroy, good evening to you and welcome. Andy Harris, Colin Searle. A lot of chat going on here, which is great, which is what it's all about. Evening, Paul. Andy Best, Aaron Walsh, Chris. Mullet Man, good evening to you, sir. Chris Glanville, good evening. Simon Snewin, good evening, Simon. How are you? Terry Bartlett, good evening. From Plymouth. Good evening from Bedfordshire. <laughs> good evening, Alan. Alan Taylor, good evening to you. Mauro Ravo, how are you? Just a basic. How are you? Good evening, Justa. <coughs> Dave Rothwell, good evening, David. Give my love to the lovely Fee as well. Hopefully we'll be seeing you sometime this year, if not next year. Good evening, Martin. Rob, CP, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, good evening even. How are you? Richard Old, hello. Miss T, how are you, T? Hope you're well. Don McKee, good evening to you. Jack Burton, TC Woodwork, good evening. Good turn, Daily Blair, good evening, Blair. Charlie Taylor, how are you? Duncan, the Demon Barber, how are you, Duncan? Keith Goddard, Peter the Park, Wood Turner, good evening Peter, and Laird Jenkins, Paul, Trevor Facknell, good evening to you, that's just what I've covered everybody I think, where did you get the shaped toolbar rest please, I couldn't see it on the Axminster website, the shaped toolbar rest, sorry I'm not with you there Paul, I'm not sure what you mean, Oh, did you mean the curved one, the bowl rests? Did you mean that one? I should be on the Axminster side. Good evening, uh, who else? Nigel, Nigel Orham, good evening to you, sir. Glenn Glazier, good evening. Best thing to do is to watch me on moot, I think. <laughs> Save me going on. <clears throat> Just gonna go to the break for a second and have a have a quick what you know I'm gonna have. Hi Kevin. <laughs> Steve Jeremiah, good evening to you, Steve. Mick Stratton, how are you, Mick? <laughs> For those of you who didn't see it in the chat, Mick's got to go into his gentleman's club to watch some pole dancers later on. Andre Pogo, good evening. Bernard Lowe, good evening, Bernard. How are you? Bit of a different format tonight, but I'll, I'll say this when I start at 7.30. Uh, this could be either one, two, even three parts, or it could be half a part. We'll see. I'm aiming for about an hour to an hour and a half uh, per section. Um, you'll see with a bit of wood I've got on there. We'll see how it goes. And things I do off camera, in other words, in between sessions, um, I'll log the hours, because quite a few people have asked me how long things take. Well, this sort of a turn, God knows. 
Um, it all depends how it turns out and what we discover as we turn it away. David Bolsch, good evening, if I missed you. Evening, David. Clark, how are you? Frederick Day, good evening. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> Wood dude's got a meat mick, that's fine enough. <clears throat> You've got some serious keyboard skills there, Douglas, putting all them names in. If I've missed anybody, I apologise and good evening and welcome. Duncan, is that the number of pieces? <laughs> could well do, could well do. Good evening, Foiled. How are you? James Cassidy. Good evening, James. Sir Mike. Sir James sounds much better. Sir Mike sounds a bit common, doesn't it? <coughs> evening, Trevor. And Rick Banks. Good evening to you. All the way from Niagara Falls. The wonders of the interweb. We're about five minutes and we'll get started. And as usual, hello Andy from Flanetley, my old Welsh mate, how are you? Um, as usual, any questions that you have for me personally, obviously wait till I stop turning because I won't be able to see the screen. However, there are numerous people who are in the chat and tonight is no exception with a lot of experience and they will most probably be able to answer your questions as well. Good evening, Pukic, Pukic, and Richard Feeder and I said hello to Colin King. How are you? Yes, you got the right day, mate. <laughs> Colin's making reference to the fact I, I put a little note up in Facebook and I said it was Sunday the 6th. Um, it's me age. Dieter, good evening. How are you? Let's start. <laughs> yeah, we'll start in a minute, mate. Don't you worry. Now you're here, I suppose, everybody. Andy Clanetley, and how are you, sir? I know I've said hello to you. Heckle. Yeah, I've got loads of heckling, Joseph. I can take it, mate. Got broad shoulders. Johnny Bravo, good evening to you. And welcome. <coughs> Well, I must say, I am, as usual, humbled. We haven't started and there's 160 people here, which is wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, and I do appreciate it. James, Wood Revival. Have anybody wondering? I'm James Wessex. Ah, James Wessex, yes. Right, James. Okay, mate, now we know who you are. Let's have a quick look here, what's going on, that's fine, connection's good, that's okay. Now there's going to be a lot of opportunity, as usual, for you all to chat tonight and in the subsequent sessions because I'll wait three minutes and I'll go through it. I'll just nip to the break and just put my mascara right. Malcolm Douglas, South Wales. Good evening to you, sir. Shamai. Martin, General Turn, good evening to you. And welcome, of course. Stuart Ingerudia, how are you? Stunts, good evening to you. Is that Graham Light? <laughs> I see the picture, Graham. Is that you? <laughs> Andy Cargans, good evening. Chris Cox, good evening. I haven't missed anybody tonight, I don't think. I think I've said hello to everybody. Give me give me a yes, Graham, if it's you, Graham Light. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's Graham Light. I just had a look at his picture. That ugly mug. Claire Rubin, good evening. How are you? Mark. My old mate Mark, the gentleman would turn up. Good evening, Mark. How are you? Okay, a couple of minutes so we can get started. Gareth Silk, good evening mate, how are, you? how are you? Brian Stately, good evening to you sir. And welcome. Neil M, good evening to you Neil. To Lundy Wood Turnings, good evening, how are you? Welcome. Chris Glanville, good evening to you and welcome. Of course, Joe Senior. Hello, Joe, how are you? Where's the old man then? Sleeping. <laughs> Paul Morris, good evening. I'm turning a 40 inch mixed medium from bowl to wood and resin. Ooh, resin. Turn it around, hollow, started to get horribly wobbly. Could be the wood way, yeah, could be. Alison Norman, good evening, how are you? Dave Shorten, good evening and welcome. Nick Castle, good evening to you, Nick, and welcome, of course. Okay, it's nearly 7.30. Um, as I say, I intend, but you know me and my intentions, intend to make it about an hour, hour and a half of turning, because I'm not going to finish this tonight by any means. My name isn't Wayne the Wood Turner. Mind you, I think even Wayne would be hard-pressed here. Um, so... We'll start off and I'll say good evening to everybody and apologies if I've missed anybody out. Good evening Adrian and what I'm doing tonight is turning a piece of ash. It's an ash crotch and as you can see from this picture here, oh I forgot something very important. Come back and we'll go to here. I want to introduce you to somebody. My assistant tonight is Cecil. Cecil the ceramic fan heater is keeping me fairly warm behind the lathe because it's very cold in here tonight i just thought i'd give him a little cameo meet cecil say hello and hopefully cecil will keep me warm he better add anyway okay back to business so we've got a uh, an ash blank and it's an ash crotch and it is not in the best of condition uh, but as a result of a few uh, sort of questions and statements from people over the months, uh, how long does it take you to do something that is like this? So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll do as many as it takes. I don't even know if this is going to turn properly. I'll have to go down, there's cracks in it, there's going to be fissures in it. This wood isn't rotten, it's where it's the, the limb is torn from the bark, torn from the, uh, the trunk, um, and it's got to be a lot of dunkity dunkity but you don't know I mean you could cut it in half and make a bowl out of it let's have an overhead so you can see again um, if you sort of cut it cut it this way then you'd have two bowls if it was good enough to turn but we don't know until we turn it uh, I do quite a quite a lot of these and um, quite a lot of them don't actually make it but we'll have to see how bad it is and we'll come back to my ugly face for a second and my idea is if we get to a stage where I can't turn it then end of story. If it gets to a stage where I think it can be turned and hollowed uh, but it needs TLC I'm not going to keep you here while I mix the CA and coffee ground or put resin or milli put in the cracks all that will be done in between sessions but I'll keep a note of the hours or how long it takes to dry etc so at the end of it if it does become a finished piece how long it is actually taken to do it because with pieces like this when you're repairing and filling cracks etc that takes the time really because you're waiting for things to happen okay enough chat We'll go to the overhead to start with, and I shall move Cecil over the way, keep me warm. Okay, so what I've done to this piece already is virtually nothing. I've merely squared this end up. I've got um, 
a step drive and a step center. The step drive is one of the uh, chuck step drives. The reason I like using step centers on this is because if I should get a catch, it's going to slip its moorings. It's not going to fly off, but it'll slip its drive, which is no problem. I just tighten up the tailstock and carry on again because it's light cuts because there's a lot of air, obviously. So I'm going to start off with a half inch bowl gouge, the Simon Hope half inch bowl gouge. And of course, with anything, you must wear face protection. But in this instance, I'm not wearing a respirator because obviously that interferes with the mic. So I'm wearing my Uvex, but always wear a face shield when turning anything like this. Well, in fact, wear a face shield when you're turning anything, in my humble opinion. Okay, so I've preloaded the speed and I can get um, 500 RPM, which is a nice speed to start with. And all I'm doing, I'm looking at the ghosting and I am just going to start very, very gently, just nibbling, nibbling away. So while I'm doing this nibbling, you can talk amongst yourselves. Because until you actually get down, I've got the handle fairly low, by the way. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not looking for big hero moves and massive cuts. I'm not holding the gouge tightly either. Because apart from being very tiring doing that, and after all said and done, this is supposed to be an enjoyable hobby, you get tired very quickly. And uh, if you do happen to get a catch, if you're hanging on for grim death, that just makes the catch all that much worse. So what I'm trying to do here is just get rid of this, this piece here so I can get a bit closer. And it's really just a case of nibbling away. Another point to note is as well, if you've got um, the, the pulleys uh, system, then what I have done here, I've got this on the lowest speed um, ratio, which gives me the highest torque. I'm going to stop now and bring it a bit closer and have a look at what we've got. We've got a crack here, uh, which I knew about. Don't know how deep that's going to go. Um, starting just to cover it. This is really not rotten. It's not soft rotten. Um, just got to keep going. And every now and again, tighten up. So I can get a bit closer now. I'm not going to start shaping yet, just going to get rid of this, um, try and get it as round as I can. Well of course the rounder it becomes, the more balanced it becomes, means I can turn the speed up a bit more as well, which makes the, makes the whole experience a little bit more enjoyable. Just nice and steadily. I mean, this might turn out to be uh, a subject which people don't really want to to watch because obviously you can't rush this sort of a turn. But um, you get together, you have a chat, and I'm just secondary, really. Well, I'm not putting the tenon on yet because I want to see, I see that cracks fairly, um, fairly substantial, but the rest of it's fairly good. I mean, if it gets to a stage where, you see that there, some nice figure there and that, so that, that's, it could, could look good. As you well know, I, I do like to have holes and voids, uh, voids and in sort of holoforms, 
And the other thing as well, in honesty, I mean, we're, we're not professional turners, okay? So time is not money, essentially. It's, it's a hobby and it's an enjoyment. And the time that you spend on something like this, if it does get to a piece at the end, um, you'd have to charge <laughs> such an amount of money just for your time. And it, it's not practical for a professional turner. But that's where we're lucky. And um, those of us who don't make a living out of turning, um, we can attempt things like this. I mean, under normal circumstances, if I was doing uh, a piece like this, I get to a certain stage, I'll keep it in the truck, or even take it out of the truck, doesn't matter, and go back to it another day. So that's why I don't really know how long these things take. But it doesn't matter, because time is not a factor in my turning. It really isn't. The only time I'm very aware of time is when I'm doing a demo, and even then, I, I don't... What Wayne, I keep going on about Wayne, and obviously other professional turners as well, um, have this ability, they've got the experience, etc., and they can turn quickly. Um, time is not something that I is an issue with me with regards to turning. It takes as long as it takes. Um, you see, apart from that, it's not looking too bad. So there is, this has got a chance. This piece here, um, this part here on the trunk, that looks pretty ropey. It's not rot, I think it's where it's been torn. So when we get round that area, which will be in a minute or two, we'll see how that develops. Because this is going to be the top of the form, that's my idea anyway. We'll work on this little bit just down here, just for a minute. So again, keep the handle fairly low and ease yourself into the cut. Just want to try and get rid of as many high spots as possible. I can't emphasize enough, I am not putting any pressure on the tool and I'm not gripping it tightly, just firmly. Okay, go a bit closer now. It doesn't hurt now and again just to check that everything is down and tight. I think I'll just, the one thing you as well, uh, quite a bit of sharpening because your edge is taking a battering when you're cutting all this air. Just, just try, I'll tell you what, you see a lot of this is uh, working on the fly because each piece has a different requirement in my view. Let's just go round the corner a little bit and just see how that looks. And I can't emphasize enough, when you're doing something like this, um, safety glasses are just not sufficient, in my view. You must wear a face shield. You've got bits of bark, bits of loose wood flying everywhere. the handle just to make a little bit of a curve. We're only just starting on what could possibly be a shape. It's 
going to be quite a while before we get to some nice smooth wood, however. Uh, let's just take a look. A little bit of shape there. See, there are cracks appearing everywhere. Well, this isn't a problem because um, when you get to a level where you think, right, I'm going to carry on with this, that's when you stand back and say, right, okay, what am I going to use to fill those cracks? How am I going to approach it? So, I'll just go a little bit more round here. really quite strange doing this in front of the camera because normally uh, when I'm doing something like this I'll stop and I'll sit down have a vape and a cup of coffee and then go back to it. Um, might actually take it off the lathe and do something else. But it, it always gives me great, I don't know, it's, it's a good learning experience and um, I'm not saying that I advise the newer turner to have a bash at this but um, it's, it's very rewarding if you do finally get a piece um, and it's equally as annoying when you don't because you put a, quite a bit of time in and you've got no result. We have to move Cyril a bit further back, he's starting to burn my leg which is nice. The rest of me is cold but my legs are warm. <laughs> Sort of getting to uh, even wood, and um, down here doesn't seem too bad at the moment. It all doesn't seem too bad. I'll take I'll take a couple more cuts there. Maybe if I go, um, I don't know if I show you. No, I can't. I was hopefully going to get from behind, but I can't do that. Let's have a change, shall we have a change? We can't see much there either. Oh, I could leave it there. I'll give you a different view and I'll work on the on this bit for a bit. Give you, give you a bit of a change. And just to, for again for the new attorney, you can see that my handle is really uh, quite low, tucked in. And because I'm going around this way, I've got my right foot forward, being I'm right-handed whereas normally your right foot would be behind. I'm only doing this to see if I can get, get through some of that um, torn wood. To see what it looks like. That's the thing with a piece like this. You, as you're going along, you're making decisions, you're deciding to do this, do that. Um, and as the wood starts to reveal itself, I don't think this is going to be a particularly interesting bit of wood, but you never know. You never know. It's definitely going to have a lopsided entrance, that's for sure. I mean, I'm not worried about finish, obviously, at this stage, but I think this could, could work out to be quite interesting. It's going to have to go in quite a bit there, so what I might do there is do come round here with the body. Hang on, let's go overhead. I'm only letting you have an idea of what my thought process is. Obviously with a hollow form it's going to, it's going to sort of come, this, this is going to be the shape, but rather than I could actually go in here and, and go in, come round, 
and go in concave and come out to the so I can actually uh, embrace that if you like as part of the surface as part of the shape I mean sorry so let's just carry on with this bit for a while and we'll go back to that one and just carry on round here for a bit I'm quite intrigued now to see how this is going to look or what it's going to reveal taking a slightly heavier cuts now because I am not cutting quite as much air and look there's cracks here you see I, that doesn't worry me as long as it doesn't start to uh, sort of come apart as it were because um, everything can be can be worked on lift the handle a bit here and just to see if there is a possibility of having that concave hmm. now there's a big crack here as well let's get down a bit further there to see what that reveals I mean there are obviously quite a lot of people maybe will say well this is a waste of time you know why, why bother with something like this life's too short well I think personally this is just me and I'm a bit of a strange fella anyway I quite enjoy things like this I, I, I find it a challenge um, <laughs> and maybe if the numbers on my live demo on this on this series goes down to about five people then I realize it's just me it's not everybody else <laughs> but I'm enjoying myself you see that there is something which is concerning slightly but I don't know we'll just have to see and whether it holds together you know I've decided to work on this area the reason being is there is a potential problem area there so if I can take this down to a certain level, I can then make an assessment um, what I'm going to do or indeed if I am going to bother going any further. And I will say this is a big strain on your edge. So I'm going to have to go to the the grinder in a minute. In fact, I'm going to go to the grinder now. I could could show you that. It's nothing no, nothing much to see really. Cyril's going to get in the way. Is it Cyril or Cecil? I can't remember. Just a quick touch up on the grinder on both of them. Just for a flesh, refresh that edge. That's the one. And just do the other one as well. Practice what you preach, Walty. I've always said if you feel that you need to sharpen, you need to sharpen.
that's all that's needed. And then we're back, back in business. And again, for the newer turner, that is why it's important, in my view, to have your sharpening apparatus as near to the lathe as you can have it. Because then you will not be tempted to say, oh, I'll just wait for another couple of cuts. Okay, let's just keep working on this for a bit now. everybody happy. I think I got a shave in then. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that. Moving my body, not my arms, to get this con to try and get some type of a concave shape going on here. Moving my body, moving my body. And let's just see what the wood's like there. Well, it's not too bad, you see, not too bad. I've got some cracking going on there, but I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered, I'm not bothered. Yeah, we've got something going on there. It's not got to be a concentric piece, I don't think, you know, with a wider stretch of the imagination. But it's got potential, in my view. I don't want a massive opening. So what, you might well say, well, why are you working? I'm working at this end now to see what I can achieve in, in my mind's eye with what I can do at this end and see what the integrity of the wood is. Again, a lot of the time when I'm turning, I mean, I have actually turned to order a few times, but um, not very often. It's normally, let's see where it takes me. I'm not a great one for that turn, let the wood speak to me. The wood's not talking to me at all. But it's uh, letting me know what I can do and what I can't do. Yeah, you see these, these bits here I'm not worried about. Even if we get a shape that I'm sort of relatively happy with, a rough shape, and start to hollow out, then, I mean, if I get holes and voids and gaps, I don't mind that. Um, that's all part of it. This little chappy, don't know how deep that goes, so we'll have to see. Um, but there's potential. There is potential. Um, it will be really nice um, <clears throat> to, like, keep this. This, this sharp, braggedy stuff. Could, because that actually adds even more character to it. And we need to get it a little bit... Just go on a little bit more. So basically, just into the cut, lift the handle, get your cut, and then move your body. Nice and gently.
say, well, it's a quiet as I do, I think. I'm really happy to just concentrate and see how things are looking. You see, it was already some... Ah, <laughs> sorry, guys. I am so sorry. <laughs> At least I was talking my way, wasn't I? Talking away there. I do apologise. Cameras. Um, shouldn't have gone to the... Shouldn't have gone to the other one. Hope that hasn't upset you too much. Basically, I've just been working on the neck here, but I think you've been uh, you've you've been hearing that with the commentary. So if I do forget the the camera occasionally, <laughs> hopefully I will verbally be talking you along what I'm doing. You see, I've got to a stage here where um, obviously it's not a final shape, but it's giving me an opportunity to look, and there is a possibility here that this could work quite well. I'm just going to just tidy that up a little bit, just because I can, or hopefully can, um, and then start working on the rest of it. But this this gives me a little bit of hope because um, it means that it's it has a possibility of turning into something. obviously going to be the final shape but as I was saying earlier on when I was on the wrong camera I, I'd dearly love to be able to keep that in but I we don't know don't know how it's going to turn out so I will leave that for a bit now and let's work on the middle a bit more and possibly a little bit of shape from there I say it's all, all it's all working on the fly really um, as, as you reveal what's there. I wonder if we can turn the speed up a bit. We're doing just on 500 revs. Now we've got it a bit rounder. Yeah, that's pretty good. Five, 560 now, that's good. It's gone a further 60. 570. 580. 600 RPM, can we, yeah, on 604, that's brilliant. Now you'll hear that this is a lot different now. It's a much quicker click. And for those of you that are interested, I, it weighed in at just... Just on seven kilos, which is, I don't know, what's that, 16 pounds, something like that. So it wasn't an immensely heavy bit of wood. Come on, he's not playing ball now. There we go. Leave that and just work on this for a minute. not lost by any means. Sure. The one thing, these, these robust tool rests are brilliant, but um, I'm so used to the different um, 
the way that my old two rest used to work, I'm, I'm always checking the height. And all I'm doing here is putting my pressure down with my thumb. I'm not doing any guiding with my left hand at all. I'm just moving my body around as I need to. And that juddering is I'm pushing too hard and come off the cut. Come around a bit more. Turn the flute in. Just get rid of that edge. Let's see. There's a couple of hairline cracks there as well, but the tenon's going to go here eventually. But yeah, it's taking some shape. So, how long have we been going? Just over half an hour. Just stop for a couple of minutes to ask any, anybody has any questions and I can have a quick drink. Ah. Ah. I can only, I, I've only just called this here about still you have to make allowances for me at my age for mixed strand. Obviously something I've done. Presumably the cameras, and I apologise for that. But um, actually, well, while I'm while I'm here, um, I I must be. Am I alone in in liking the challenge of doing something like this? Are there, are there others of you that like to do that and obviously find the same as I do, that you can be thirded for a little while before you realise that there's a possibility that that bit of wood's actually going to yield something? <coughs> no, it's not. Uh, Rich Healy's asked if the ash is fully dry. No, in, in, it's about... It's difficult, it, because it's a crotch, it's different different densities of wood, etc. But I've put the moisture meter on it today, funny enough, and it's between 13 and 16%. So it's by no means dry, but it's by no means sopping wet either. I've just uh, Wayne, Wayne the wood turner has got a premiere in 25 minutes. It's only 15 minutes long, but uh, pop along and watch Wayne. You can actually watch me and Wayne, or leave me and see Wayne. I think uh, Shay just said no, I'm not alone. That's good. <laughs> Oh girl, there's quite a few, yeah. I find, you know, uh, I don't know what it is. It, it, it's not sort of, oh, look how clever I am. I just actually enjoy getting something to look at it. And I think, well, I'm not gonna, that's not gonna turn, cut it up for the, you know, for the fire. But then you look at it and you think, mm, I don't know, it could yield something. So I stick it on the lathe. I've never done something like this on a live or indeed, uh, well, I've only done a couple of videos, but it's different with videos. But I will say this, that it could be, if it does go as I hope it will, um, there will be finishes and then I'll do some work in between the one live and the next live because obviously I'm not going to sit here and hollow this out tonight um, even if I get to a stage where I can hollow it out um, or the cracks need filling so uh, but I will give an update when I start the next live demo on this piece uh, which will be the next one, obviously, um, if we get that far and explain what I've done and how long it's taken. Not so much for the glue drawing, but how much work it was um, applying the filler, whatever. I'm looking forward to the warmer weather too, because I've got this resin burning a hole in my pocket. I want to be using that uh, for filling major voids and cracks. But in this, in this temperature, you've got a bowl of water and it, I just wanted to get warmer, then it flows better and it actually penetrates better as well.
Jack Byrne, that's great. We, I, I still get that now. Still get that feeling now, eight years on, over eight years on. Yes, I know, you wouldn't believe I've been turning only eight years. <laughs> or should I say, you, you think I've been turning a lot less than that, yeah. Les, hello Les. Crotch Beach just been felled. Same size as yours, could be a while for it to dry a bit. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, this piece, I can't remember where I got this piece from. Um, but it's it's been been hanging about for a while, but it's certainly by no means dry, dry, you know. Right, I'm going to have a quick vape, and uh, I've gone to break for a minute, still see the chat. Evening Wood Wizardry, Colin, how are you? Oh good Frank, Frank said I'm not alone. It seems like quite a lot of you um, like this type of turning. My main concern was whether it would be too boring for people, but I mean, normally, not just in my lives, but in everybody's lives, you get a good, good vibe, if you like, going on in the chat. So the turning is almost secondary. So I'm gonna don my face shield and carry on a bit further and see what we can reveal. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I mean, this has obviously got to come in an awful lot more. But it's quite encouraging that the uh, solid wood there. Some nice figure going to come out there as well, as you'd expect from a crotch. And the other thing as well is I don't put it on a chuck. Uh, I won't say to the last minute, but my reasoning behind that is, as I say, I'm on um, step centres, and uh, if I show you, you could possibly see maybe not quite as well as you could be there's only half of this uh, half of the teeth are grabbing in here that's all so if i get a, a catch that's got to slip um, the drive center is quite well seated but I, I like doing this because it gives me that extra um, bit of security if you like if i do get a catch uh, it's going to slip as opposed to dragging me into it uh, I think Ed Oliver actually doesn't tighten his belt up so much on the, not on his trousers, but on his pulleys, on his drive pulleys, for the same reason. That if he gets a catch, there's, uh, the belt will slip. You see, I'm, I'm one of these, if I can get the 
if I can get a shape on the outside with all the bark on and everything else I don't care because I'll hollow from the inside and any pieces like this will turn into voids or holes in the piece but um, the problem with that is you've just got to try and make sure that the integrity of what's left is man enough to um, stay together basically edge time again. See if that's any different. Oh yes. Now the thing is that when you're talking like I am, you lose sight of the fact that, hang on a minute, I'm really not getting a lot of uh, much cut here. And that was down to the fact that the edge needed freshening up. So, I love these double-ended tools for that sort of thing. It means I can carry on when I'm in the zone, as it were, um, and then give them both a sharpen. Just doing a very basic exploratory cut here for a shape to see if um, this wood down here is okay and start to get uh, something of a tenon. There's a lot of cracking Yes, there is, without a shadow of a doubt. Quite a nice surface there, actually, and there's a nice figure. So, um, there will be some TLC needed, obviously, but um, I think this is going to be okay. Famous last word. <laughs> So come down here, lift the handle, keep that bevel in contact with the wood, make sure you don't catch the wing on there. Um, we're going to lose quite a bit, but that's okay. That's all right. Yeah, I think that's good. It's good to be good, as he said, talking to himself. <laughs> Let's just bring this bit down a bit. I want that to come in a lot steeper than that anyway, but I just want to see. Yeah, this has got some. Potential, as they say. It's moving my body. Just want to get rid of this excess wood here, really.
Yeah, that's what I like to be able to get there, you see, is we got solid wood there. Now I can... I can see a shape there that is going to be quite good. It needs to come round. This shoulder obviously needs to come off, which we could work on now. Again, as I say, I'm working on the fly. I really haven't got this. This is a slight concern, but let's just see how far that actually goes. start now. Yeah that's going to be uh, quite a nasty crack so that's going to obviously need quite a bit of work on it but um, let's just see if we can get the basic sort of shape. I'm going to go for this, um, this concave effect on the neck. possibility of a hollow form and these pieces here you see if I can get the shape I'm wanting and leaving these uh, below the shape then when I hollow out that will reveal the um, see the bark is quite tough quite tough there so that will reveal voids in the piece right any questions up to now or suggestions indeed Steve Jobbins has said, come on, Mike, <laughs> Wayne would be sanding by now. I'm sure he would, Steve. <sighs> Nobody said it was going to be a speed turn.
<clears throat> Has anybody got any uh, questions apart from my sanity? Or lack of it, I should say. No, no one's interested. That's fine. Where can I get? Oh, uh, Wood Wizard by Colin. Where where can I get a bowl spindle gouge jig to use with a bench grinder without break, breaking the bank? Um, if you don't go for one way, Colin, um, I don't know if he's still on eBay. Believe it or not, there's a guy that makes them in the UK, and I can't think of his name or what his account is. But if you search on eBay, I think you might find he makes them himself. The London wood turnings, that's going to be, well I hope it does, uh, we don't know yet. Hello Dewey, what's a good Biggers Halloween kit? GD Biggers Halloween kit, no idea mate. Graham Lloyd, it seems like a good idea to have a wood burner when you're turning from log to lathe. Bugger, I mean, <laughs> very true Graham, I knew it's you. What's this cunning stunts business mate? <laughs> Quick question, which belt are you using on the Sorby? I, um, I got a diamond belt about six, eight weeks ago, maybe longer than that, a couple of three months ago, and they're brilliant, I highly recommend them. They are a big investment, but they're well, well worth it, they really are. <clears throat> okay, Colin, that's fine, no problem, any time, mate. Right, I'm going to put the brake on for a second. We don't want people complaining that I'm vaping online. Hello, Patrick Bowers. Will you be leaving some bark on this piece? And hello, hello to you. And yes, I hope so. Uh, that's, that's what I like to do. And also um, a good quick question, would it be okay to use a faceplate or better to wait until I have some stem centres? Um, Gareth, it, it's a personal thing with a piece like this because you don't know how it, uh, what the integrity of the wood is. I prefer to use something that's going to slip should I get a catch. Um, I have touch wood, I've not a catch up to now. But when you've got a big lump of wood spinning around, I always think to begin with, until you get a feel for the wood and what shape you're going to go for, you've got it between centres, it's safe, it's captive, it's got two, two points of contact. Um, now I would feel quite happy, which I most probably will do shortly, is form a tenon and put it in a chuck or a faceplate, whatever. Uh, a faceplate is a great idea. I'm not a great fan of putting screws into end grain though, I have to say, so that's just me, um, but I mean I've turned something similar to this on a glue block, believe it or not, so yeah, but I, I don't know what the other guys feel here, but putting screws into end grain I always feels a little bit iffy because it doesn't, and cross grain yeah that's fine, like a bowl, but if you're doing an end grain work like this is, um, a faceplate is not something that I'd be happy with, personally. I might be wrong and others might say it's okay. Question, would you chip the bark off and sand or leave it? If left, do you harden it? Uh, Jack, from Jack Burton. Um, with ash, I'm gonna, I could well eat my words here. I've always found when I've turned quite a bit of ash that the bark is pretty stable. Um, this parts of this bark seem I like to leave it as natural as possible so if I can leave the bark on um, if it does need a bit of stabilization I'll just put a, a drip a bit of uh, thin CA around the edge but I at this stage I'm not sure I don't chip the bark off because I do like to keep bark on if I possibly can especially if um, let's go to the overhead my ideal scenario would be let's hypothetically say I keep this piece of bark here and as I hollow because there's a good I don't know 10 12 mil between that valley 
and that peak. So if I'm hollowing out even, and it won't be a thin wall bowl, even if it's eight or nine mil wall, that's gonna peak through as a hole. This is gonna become a void. Um, and I've got bark around it and the void, and that to me gives a lovely bit of character. And the same would happen here. And this bark is fairly well uh, solid. So and what I do there, if, if I decide to buff this and, and wax the, the smooth bits that would be, I merely would put oil. And I've quite often done pieces like this where I've got Danish oil on the bark, let that four or five coats of that, and the rest of it I'll wax and go on the buffing wheel with. It's a lot of, per it's a lot of personal, uh, what you feel happy doing personally, you know, but I like bark, I just think it adds to character. And even if the actual outer layer comes off, you've still got the markings of the bark. You know, you've got the, the, the cadmium layer underneath. If it's unbalanced, I get it to re recess or turn in quickly. If it's flat enough, would consider a faceplate. Um, fine. Uh, everybody, each to his own. Um, I just happen to like turning, a bit of a coward, I suppose. I like turning between centres with a thing like this until I feel happy that I can put it on a um, <coughs> on a chuck. Do we shed Simon Hope? Do a mini hollowing kit for small hollow forms? Uh, is what I use. Yeah. Um, oh, where are we? Here we go. So I missed the question actually, but for small hollow forms, these these are brilliant. Six mil cutters, six mil carbide cutters. Um, in the pack you get, um, I believe you get the hook tool and you get the straight and a, ha a handle. I mean, I just had a spare handle, but um, they're brilliant bits of kit. And they, these six mil cutters don't have to take, take some stuff, believe me. They take a lot of, uh, take a lot of wood. I mean, this, uh, this big boy here, the, this is my first hollowing tool I got from Simon. Where are we? Which is the uh, six mil, what they call the six millimeter pro carbide. <laughs> And that basically used to, I don't know what now, but used to come with a, a rubber handle here, uh, a rubber slip-on handle there, and a bit here for, for holding on to. This thing is awesome. It really is. Um, I just happen to have a large handle that I put it in. Um, and this, you know, it, it, it's, to me, it's one of my favorite hollowing tools. I've got two or three from Simon that I really love to use. Uh, they're all effective, but I think each one... Hello, Carl Jacobson. How are you? Good evening, sir. Uh, Ronnie, do I let the wood determine the shape or do you have a plan before you begin? Nine times out of ten, I have a plan. But all, all well-laid plans are laid to waste. It does depend on the wood, obviously, what's revealed. If it's a fairly stable piece of wood you start with, then yes, I've got a shape in my head, but I don't work the plans. I was watching Cindy Drozda the other night, and I mean, that woman is, is, apart from being so, so gifted and so talented, she is very technically minded, and everything has to be just so to measurements. I don't turn like that. I have something in my mind's eye, and it evolves as I'm turning, Ronnie, basically. I hope you're keeping well, Carl. Give my love to Robin too. Okay. I um, will go to the overhead again. What I'm going to do now is just carry on a little bit and um, we've been at it an hour, which is not bad to get to here. I'm happy with that considering what it was to start with. I'm happy I'm getting some shape, but you can see here that we've got cracks appearing here. This is all going to need care. Um, you see, you've got bug marks there. Now, I like to keep those in, but you have to see when I get to the final shape, then, uh, or the final shape that I'm happy with, then we'll have to do the, the TLC. That crack there is going to cause a bit of a problem as well, I think. But um, Nothing, hopefully, is beyond a little bit of work. Okay, let's uh, just get down here, sort that bit out. Face shield on. And I know I'm going on about it. I cannot emphasize enough, especially the newer turners, always wear your face shield. Okay, we'll just get that down a little bit more. 
and we can turn the speed up even more now. So 720 RPM now and it's solid, which is good. Check everything is down and just and then get your turning hat back on. Now that knocking there is in, I think, one of the cracks. So again, I'm aware of it. I'm not going on blindly. Uh, I can, I can hear it. Just there, do you hear it? Ding, 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 ding. And that is the crack again for the newer turner. That will be. There's a knot there as well, but you've got this crack, you've got little cracks everywhere here. But I'm not perturbed by that because that can all be sorted out. Let's move Cyril, my fan heater, is burning me again. Okay, so we'll just have a look at a, an area here. Yeah, this has got to work okay, I think. Right, that gives me plenty of room to work. So now I think it's time. Now the problem here with the cracking, I'm going to start to form a tenon now. Now what's in my mind then is of course I'm going to change out uh, rests to a smaller rest so I'm not hanging over the edge here too far when I'm forming this tenon. Um, the idea in my head always with things like this you can see quite substantial cracking here. Well that's going to be the chucking point this area here. So once I've got it down if it holds together, hopefully it does. Once I've got it down to my tenon, then I would stop and I would treat this with CA glue. So I've got a firm, uh, thin CA, so I've got a firm, uh, solid mounting point for the chuck. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. and easy with a parting tool and because these are quite generous jaws you see I don't have to worry too much about straightening this up as long as I get um, at least half the depth of uh, the tenon of the jaws then I'm, I'm, then I'm happy with that. thing here obviously with any tenon is that you want a nice square shoulder for again for the newer turner when you're turning a tenon you want it to be at the manufacturer's diameter because you will get the best hold then where each jaw is giving a hundred percent grip on your piece but that's the subject possibly of another video for which I and many others have got out there the importance of the correct size tenon or indeed mortise. Thank you. 
Now the new reason I'm getting rid of this now is I'm going a bit deeper than I originally planned. So I don't want this to fall on the base of the jaw. Okay. Gonna, sorry, it's going to be a bit bright for you. Yeah, no, I'm quite happy with that. You can see there we've got sort of two widths of the uh, parting tool and we've got just enough where this will not foul on the back. But I'm going to bring this little bit down here a bit more. Now these are dovetailed on the inside and the outside. Uh, my mega jaws have got serrated internal gripping um, but I just happen to have these on so I'm going with these and I have a uh, an old skew which I've actually got at the right angle to get my dovetail so I shall do that now dovetail. A nice square shoulder there, just take that a bit. A nice crisp corner there for the front of the jaw to register against and as I say the depth should be okay but I'll just take that little nubby bit down a bit further there. And again, as I always say on my videos and my demos, this is not a definitive way of doing something. It's the way I like to do it. Other people will have other ideas, and that's fine. That's what's so good about the craft. Everybody has their own method of doing something, and I always say if it works for you, it's the right way. And the other thing is you keep your, keep your centre point, um, if you can, on the back there, because if there is a problem with sizing or even with integrity, then you have the opportunity to remount the piece. I'm just going to take my... Oh, my boys are off. So now we just... Move this back, take out the drive centre, and let's see how we're doing. How is it? No, it is actually, yeah, that's okay. Off camera, I shall just pop the band saw. Bear with me. I can carry on talking although you can't see me. Um, this is something that again isn't really recommended but uh, I'm quite happy doing it. So bear with me a second I'm just going to take this little nub off. I can do that quite happily because I know that it's going to go back to the overhead because um, I know it's going to fit in the chuck. So tighten up the jaws. 
Now you can see the gap that we've got because jaws, and again I'm preaching to the converted for the more experienced turner, jaws are cut out of one piece of metal. So you have a, an optimum dimension for your jaws which give you complete holding power right the way around the tenon. Now I'm chancing my arm here, yeah smack on. Normally what I would do is bring up the tail stock before you put it, before you tighten up the jaws just to make sure it's central but uh, luckily on this occasion I cut a perfect tenon. Back to me face again. So anyway I cut the correct tenon and it is spinning uh, true which is remarkable. I will keep the tail stock up. Um, how long we done now? and a quarter. Okay, uh, what I intend to do, I'll go back to the overhead just for a second. What I intend to do now is I have to, I'm just mounting it up to make sure everything runs true, which it does. Now this, at this point, I'm going to be saying it's enough. The reason being, is that the tenon, if I just take it out, take it out of the jaws and I can show you what I mean because this is what I do if I wasn't filming. Now you can see we've got cracking here which extends to the shoulder, cracking here, cracking here, cracking here. So all this is going to be treated and while I'm at it, I'll most probably start doing a little bit on these as well. Not too much here because a lot of that's going to go away. But that's what I would start. The rest of it, the integrity is pretty good. And we've got this little chappy here. So I would start with thin CA glue without any coffee ground or anything. And just see how much of that takes. Uh, how long it, how much it absorbs. Um, but these, these chappies here I will certainly pay a lot of attention to because they're going to be holding the piece throughout the operation. So as far as turning is concerned, we will call that a night for tonight. Um, and in the next session, in the next session, which will be hopefully next Sunday, uh, what I'll have done there, it'll go back on, onto the lathe um, just with all the cracks addressed and then we'll carry on final shaping and then start to hollow. But again with hollowing, I'm not going to bore you with all the hollowing, we'll just see how things go and that is why it might well make three parts. But um, that's it really for tonight and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, now for any questions and any queries and indeed any suggestions. I can see the, uh, the chat, I'm just going to have a quick vape. Quick question, will you shellac first to help stop the CA marking? Um, no, I, I, I don't do that Steve. I've heard a lot of people do it. Um, I, I apply my CA um, as accurately as I can um, ever since I got these little chappies, you know, the little, um, where are we there, the little pinpoint um, nozzles that you put on your CA so I don't get much overspill and that's not being big headed, that's just using those and being very careful. So the answer to your question in a very long winded way is no. Mike, how long has that wood been down? I have no idea, James, wood revival. No idea. I can't, I, I'm not sure if someone brought it to me or, well, obviously somebody did at some stage, how long it's actually been. It was in my lean-to and I was having a clear out amongst the wood there and I saw that and it was going to go on the fire. But then I decided I'd have a go at it. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Glad you enjoyed it. Douglas Mungum, Mike, you are not insane. Oh yes I am. You like a challenge. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks Douglas. What's happened to the big heater? Oh, the big heater is still working fine, um, but it, not that cold. But this, this little heater I've had for a while as well, and it's brilliant uh, for just heating behind the lathe. 
uh, which is all that's interesting, when I'm doing um, a demo or uh, when I'm actually filming. You should not go inexpensive, you'll be right, that's obviously an answer to a question. Ooh wee, do they come from Mike? Must have been inexpensive from Mike. One thing I'd like to mention, if I may, and I make no apologies, um, if anybody's interested, I do have a few bookings, um, and it's started to take off quite well. Um, I'm doing one-to-one -one Zoom sessions uh, for basically the beginning turner and the newer turner um, to ad address any problems you might have and to demonstrate and to show with you being by your lathe in your workshop, me being here at mine, and I can show you, you can show me, and then I can show you, and it's a one-to-one, -one, like being here face-to-face. -face. So if anybody's interested, um, either contact me uh, via Facebook Messenger, um, or indeed my email address, which is on my channel description, and uh, we can arrange something. Just thought I'd let you know. Good night, Carl. All the very best. Thanks very much for coming along. And as I say, give my love to Robin and speak to you soon. <coughs> Gentle turn. Why didn't you dust off the chuck jaws before fixing the wood? Couldn't it be a lack of safety to the fix? Okay, you stop now. Um, yes, Martin. Yep, yeah, you, you could be right. But um, I didn't actually think of doing that. But yes, you should. You should, especially, especially doing, but don't forget, I'm not actually turning with that. Um, I would obviously do that before I tighten it up under normal circumstances. I was merely doing for fit, make sure it was central, um, and then I'll clean everything up uh, before I start again when it's holding on to the piece only. Good point, though, Martin. Good part. Good point. If you fill the gap to resin, do you brush it or how do you apply it? I haven't used resin apart from, I did use it on a U-bowl. I'm not an expert with resin. And as I explained earlier on, um, with the temperature in my workshop, resin needs to be as warm as possible to flow nicely. I had some success on the U-bowl, but I had to put the resin into boiling water, <laughs> or put the bottle, bottles in there to make them uh, fluid enough and liquid enough. So I'm going to leave the resin until the warmer weather, um, but pour it, you'll be able to pour it, because resin, when it's at the right viscosity, will find every single crevice and crack that's there. So I'm told, and I've got no reason to disbelieve it. I'm looking forward to using that, actually. Glad you enjoyed it, Paul. Thank you. Can be so bold as to ask how much, please? Um, Steve, get in touch with me um, and we can sort something out. Not, not because I'm ashamed to admit how much I'm charging. I'm not charging as much as the professionals by any means. I charge by the hour. Um, if um, a couple of hours aren't enough and you've paid for a couple of hours and it goes on for two and a half, I'm not going to charge the extra, obviously. It's just to give you an insight into any problems you might have or any, any, any advice that you might want. But it's very competitive, I assure you. Glad you enjoyed it, David. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Terry. Thanks for popping in. Thanks, Martin. I, was, I wasn't, uh, Martin, gentle turn. I totally agree with what you're saying, but because I wasn't actually going to carry on turning, I was only doing a fit, that wasn't an issue. But yes, I, I will stress again, very, very important to make sure that your chuck is dust free so you get a really good hold. Good night, Graham. Thank you very much. Nigel, that is very kind of you. Thank you, sir. You are a scholar. Where do I get the little CA nozzles? Um, I got them on eBay, and I can't remember where. I just put in uh, thin glue nozzles, and they came up. And they're, they're cheap as chips, about three quid for ten, I think, four quid for ten. And they like, you can actually reuse them as well. Good night, Dieter. Thank you very much for coming. Much appreciated. <coughs> Thank you to Lundy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming. Good night, Colin. All the very best, mate.
Frederick D, uh, are the jaws I experimented G jaws? Sorry if you mentioned before. Um, the ones I'm using tonight are the M jaws. They're the ones with the dovetail in and out on the inside and the outside. The um, the other jaws, I'm not sure if that's the ones you mean, but they're the big jaws as well. They have a dovetail on the outside profile. Does that show it up? Yeah. Uh, but on the inside, they are a straight profile with a serrated part on the inside. Now for wet wood they're brilliant, for really wet wood they're excellent, I prefer to use those. Good night James, thank you very much for coming, I don't think I said good evening, so good evening and good night James, thank you very much for coming along. All the best Andy, I'll see you next week mate, all being well. The old Colin, thanks for coming mate, appreciate it. Well I hope some of you found it of interest anyway, it's basically a fly in the wall jobby, you know, uh, just my methods of doing things and if it's the right way it's not. I missed Pete tonight as well, Pete Ravenscroft. Thanks very much Lawrence, take care mate. Glad you enjoyed it Gareth. Yeah, look forward to seeing you next week mate. Yeah, that's, I, I'm really pleased it's, uh, it's going to be a, a goer anyway. <laughs> Thanks Martin. And you too, thanks very much. And thanks for your input Martin, always appreciated mate. <coughs> Douglas, I'll ignore that. Take care Paul, thanks very much indeed. Cheers. How come Axminster has sent your smoke with your name on and when I, was smock, so I get mine with it, it had dickhead. Um, I don't know Mick, horses for courses Mick I think. <laughs> oh, dear. Mark, Mike, I ignore the voice mail I left you earlier. Oh okay. Um, I won't ignore it, I'll listen to it and I'll think why. Uh, Leroy, all being well, it'll be next Sunday, if not the Sunday after. But um, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, the reason it's been so long with this one is real life has gotten away. Jobs have had to get done. Thanks very much, Mick. I'll be hopefully next week, same time. Thanks, Brian. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for coming. Good night, Simon. Glad you enjoyed it, mate. Okay, I'll do that, Simon, when I finish. Will do. Good night, Stuart. Take care. Good night, Paddy. I don't think I said good evening to you, so good evening and good night, Paddy. Thanks very much for coming. I appreciate it. Good night, Stuart. Right, just going to have a... I wonder what he's going to be doing. <laughs> Good night, Foiled. Good night, James. All the best, mate. Take care. Thanks for coming. Oh, Brian, that's extremely kind of you. Thank you. You are a star. Thank you, sir. Cheers, Nigel. Glad you enjoyed it. Good night, Kelvin. Take care. Good night, Andy. All the very best, mate. No start. Oh, Buster. You're very kind. Ah, Buster. It's Brian, isn't it? <laughs> I just realised, just seen your face. Brian, that's very kind of you. There's no need for that, mate. That's much appreciated. Appreciated? Very much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Good night, Charlie. Thanks a lot, mate. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, David. Thanks, Steve. Glad you turned up and glad you enjoyed it, mate. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks, Frederick. That's my pleasure, Frederick. Hope to see you next time for the next instalment, when hopefully you won't go through the side. <laughs> Maybe a lesson in how not to hollow.
Well guys, I'll give it till 9 o'clock and then we'll call it an evening. Um, relatively short one for me, an hour and a half. Thanks a lot, live stream Rob. I appreciate it, thanks for turning up. It goes without saying, lads and lasses, I've thoroughly enjoyed your company and I really hope that the chat has helped the new attorneys or anybody else has had questions have been answered that I've missed. Um, Good night, Patrick. All the best, mate. Thanks for turning in, especially all the way from Arkansas. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dario. Thank you for coming. Cheers, Alan. Yeah, so as I say, uh, I was asked, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Uh, it's just uh, really start to finish. As I say, even if it takes four in storms, I, don't, I really don't care. But if, if you get fed up with it, you must let me know. But it's just me doing a piece that hasn't been planned. Um, and we'll see. Okay then, guys. There don't seem to be any questions, which is good. Good night, William. Thanks very much for coming. All the best, Nathan. I've got one minute to go, and then I've got to say good night to you all. Oh, well done, Rob. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. <laughs> I've got to ignore the wink. Uh, Pete uh, Ravenscroft's normally here, so um, I, he always puts loads of input in. Very experienced Turner. But I must, I must say something uh, for the guys that are left here, the newer Turners that are still left here. Martin, uh, gentle Turner, made a very, very valid point. If I carried on turning, I would have blown out the um, the chuck and for those of you that are still here if you see here there's all bits of debris in there especially with the fact that I was using a uh, step centre which is captured by the jaws so before I actually would turn now all that dust comes out of there to make sure that you get a perfectly good contact on your tenon very important point and uh, a very pertinent point too. Good night Mark, thanks very much for popping in mate, I appreciate it. Thank you. And Alison, I didn't say good evening but good evening and thank you for coming. All the best Shay, thank you very much indeed. Glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully you can make it next week. Okay guys, um, I'm going to say good night to you all. Thank you once again very much indeed for turning up and thanks for those that um, did some super chat that's always appreciated as well um, and until next time stay safe and have a great week all the best good night now cheers